Demon Slayer Season 3 has been an absolute banger as always, but there is something, or should I say someone, in this arc that has had me so uncontrollably excited. The Swordsmith Village arc is an arc that isn't really all that much of a fan favourite for Demon Slayer fans, especially coming off of the amazing Entertainment District arc. But when I first read through this arc, it was an instant favourite of mine for one reason alone. So to avoid spoilers for the anime only fans, just looking at what we have seen in the anime so far, which is up to episode 5 at the time of this video's making, we have had some really great moments in this arc already with the reveal of the upper moons, we've had some intriguing moments in Tanjiro's ancestors' memories, the fight scenes have been insane, especially the Dragon Sun Halo head dance move. With that, we've had Tanjiro turning his Neatrine blade red, we've also had the Mist Hashira, and then of course Genya's big moment at the end of episode 5 and so, so much more. However, as I'm sure you are all well aware, it's none other than the love Hashira Mitsuri that made me instantly fall for this arc. I'm a huge Mitsuri fan man for like both the degenerate reasons and for the fact that I think she's just a really great character. In fact, I'll go as far as saying that she's easily one of my favourites in the entire series and to see her animated with more of the limelight focused on her has been just so freaking good. Like the title Love Hashira has just been so damn perfect for Mitsuri since like she is such a kind hearted and compassionate person. Mitsuri is just so bubbly and full of life. She's a person who continues to find you know the beauty and joy in the people and places that she surrounds herself with, despite spending years battling horrific and strong demons. Mitsuri is a highly emotional, enthusiastic, cheerful person who frequently gives compliments to others, even if a lot of it is seen through her inner thoughts, which again reinforces her title as the love Hashira. Now, despite being somewhat shy and very easily flustered, Mitsuri is always, always friendly to others. And we see this with her interactions with Nezuko. Not only are these moments so insanely freaking adorable, but they are a perfect example of just how kind a person Mitsuri is. Of course, following their first proper meeting with one another in the Swordsmith Village arc, Mitsuri gets to know Nezuko better and starts to think of her as a substitute for a younger sister. Mitsuri states that she gets along with each of her five siblings and that she has, a, of course, a large family as you'd expect him. Nezuko is just so moved by Mitsuri's love and kindness that they forge a bond very quickly. Enough so that she even requests Tanjiro to braid her hair in that same distinctive way as Mitsuri's. Which is another thing I love about Mitsuri's character. Her look, of course. For me, Mitsuri is definitely best girl of the series all round, but also in the looks department. As again, yes, some of it is that degenerate side, and most of it is just I just really like the design. Mitsuri is a curvy young woman standing in average height with a slightly pale skin tone. You know, she has these giant and beautiful pale green eyes with long eyelashes and a little beauty mark beneath each of them. Of course, one of her most defining features is her long pale pink hair that is braided into three thick plaits that becomes lime green halfway down. And a fun little fact about Mitsuri's hair, it is said that Mitsuri overindulged in Sakura Mochi, which is why her hair colour is the way it is. The coloration is caused by excessive eating of certain dishes, and this is actually attainable in real life. How crazy is that? And now, yes, as I'm sure you're very well aware, Mitsui's other most defining feature is without a doubt the chest area, as I usually dub her the, the booba Hashira. And I mean, she, do, she does have killer booba, won't lie. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of the booba and I appreciate them. And let's face it, it's near impossible to miss Mitsuri's and you know, that's all down to the fact that her Demon Slayer uniform really does show them off. But did you know that there's actually a reason behind that? So yeah, we're actually told in the extra pages of volume 12 of the Demon Slayer manga that, um, yeah, one of the Giga Chad Kokushi members who was called Maeda, also part of the Demon Hunter Uniform Sewing Division. What a division to be part of. So yeah, he made this uniform especially for Mitsuri knowing full well what he was doing. Mitsuri initially freaked out about it, but thought that this was just the uniform that all the girls wore. So she kind of just went with it. Of course, this is not the uniform that all the girls wear. No, no, no. Maeda had actually made this same design uniform for Shinobu, Kanao, and Aoi, but 
Shinobu, of course, as we know, is an absolute beast. Being the kind of girl you don't mess with, she just straight out burned the uniform straight in front of him, saying like, yep, I'm not wearing that. She then lent her oil and matches to both Kanao and Aoi to do the exact same. Now, of course, we know Mitsuri is not like this. You know, she's too pure for this world, so she couldn't bring herself to burn the uniform that was made for her. Thus, she just decided to keep on wearing it. Praise this girl's sweet and noble heart, man. Like I say, Shinobu probably would have nailed this uniform look as well, though. Just saying. Speaking of uniforms, the plain white Haori that she wears is actually a gift from none other than the flame Hashira Rengoku. And another really cool thing about Mitsuri's character, for me personally, is her connection to Rengoku. Of course, Kyojuro Rengoku quickly became a fan favorite, though it isn't until later in the manga that it is revealed that he was actually Mitsuri's instructor. Not only did Mitsuri say that Rengoku behaved like a big brother figure to her, but she also said that training under him was very enjoyable. Now, it was under his tender instruction that Mitsuri learns to use her love breathing style that was derived from Rengoku's trademark flame breathing. Of course, understandably, Mitsuri, like the rest of the Hashira, is completely crushed by Rengoku's passing at the hands of Upper Moon 3 Akaza. And I've got to say, I just really love the dynamic between Mitsuri and Rengoku, and I think their friendship really adds a lot more to both of their characters. If you want to see more on that, you can check out more of her time training with Rengoku in his spin-off chapters in the Demon Slayer stories of Water and Flame manga. Definitely worth a read. And now, despite how kind and innocent she is, Mitsuri shows no mercy to demons, instead expressing her feelings in a much more unforgiving way. Mitsuri also demonstrates a great deal of commitment to the goals of the Demon Slayers and is one of their greatest warriors. And of course, despite her commitment to the Demon Slayer's cause, it is of course revealed that Mitsuri joined the Demon Slayer Corpse in order to find herself a suitable husband who is stronger than she is. And yeah, good luck with that though. Our girl is an absolute tank. Misery is a harsh hero of the Demon Slayer Corps, and as such is just an extremely strong and proficient fighter. Rengoku himself deemed it exceptional that she was able to complete final selection after only six months of preparation. And now one of the things that makes Mitsuri stand out amongst the other Demon Slayers is that she has a unique muscular composition that makes her muscles eight times denser than those of a typical person. Of course, Mitsuri also has a rather significant appetite in order to maintain this composition. So guys, if you're into a girl who can out eat you and kick your ass, then Mitsuri is certainly your girl. Now, while Mitsuri's physique can get rather muscular, she is also incredibly flexible, which allows her to fight from a distance. When combined with her love breathing, she has the ability to land and deflect extremely strong hits. Her adaptable Nichirin sword, which she can utilize to easily block or land hits with, is also very important to her style when taking on demons. Her Nichirin sword being another thing which makes Mitsuri so unique. Unlike the majority of Demon Slayers who wield regular katanas, Mitsuri wields a long, incredibly thin, flexible katana that resembles that of a whip. And it's Mitsuri alone who is able to utilize this sword without hurting herself because of its construction. This is all down to her superhuman flexibility. Mitsuri can execute moves faster with this katana than Tengen Uzui, the sound Hashira. Now, Mitsuri carries a standard sized and shaped sword sheath along with her unique katana. Mitsuri folds her katana numerous times to correctly sheath it. So Mitsuri invented the breathing style known as love breathing after utilizing flame breathing while serving as a student under Rengoku. Love breathing makes use of both Mitsuri's unusual whip like Nichirin sword and her superhuman flexibility and strength. She can launch attacks with a broad range of motion and extended ranges using her breathing style, something a regular katana would not be able to perform. So, it, it's cool that Mitsuri picked up flame breathing while training under Rengoku, but even though Mitsuri learned it, she wasn't as proficient with it and couldn't use it to its maximum extent. She thus created love breathing, a breathing style that is more suited to her and effectively plays to her strengths. Now, love breathing from what we know has six forms, though we have only seen her use five of them, which include first form, shivers of first love, second form, love pangs, third form, cat love shower, fifth form, swaying love wild claw, and sixth form, cat leg winds of love. Now, I really love this little bit of trivia about Mitsuri's love breathing forms, but did you know that because she once had a cat as a youngster, a couple of Mitsuri's attacks have some sort of cat-related name to them. On top of that, she enjoys discussing cats with the stone Hashira Kyome. 
Now, there is so much more to Mitsuri that really makes her stand out as not only a best girl of Demon Slayer, but also as one of its best characters. But that dives into her backstory as well as future events involving her in the story. So, as to not spoil those details for the anime only fans, I shall save those topics for another time if you wish to see more Mitsuri on the channel. Now, while you wait for the next video to drop, why not check out this video where I talk about one of the absolute killer shows of this season in my love story with Yamada-kun at level 999. But guys, that's it from me. I'll see you soon for some more. Till then, you take care of yourselves. Peace, peace.